Jella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to you. Good evening and welcome to Creature Features. I am your host, Vincent Van Dahl. Tonight we'll be screening the 1958 classic, Terror in the Haunted House. Produced by William S. Edwards and directed by Harold Daniels, this film was originally titled, My World Dies Screaming. We haven't been quite yet able to determine why the name was changed, but it was likely something requested from the production company's marketing department. The film revolves around the tale of a young woman who has been experiencing reoccurring nightmares about a particular house and... and... Tom, this format is wretched. Just give it a try. No, it's stupid. I'm not Sir Richard Bloody Attenborough. Give it a chance. It'll make the show more appealing to a wider audience. I bloody well think not. This is how it's done. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. With me is my veritable vixen of the manor and demolitions expert, the sweet and dainty Tangella. And the dapper chap to this side is my benevolent butler, Mr. Livingston. Tonight we'll be watching Terror in the Haunted House. A scary movie from 1958. Joining us will be the wonderful Russ Stanley, who plays for the San Francisco Giants baseball team. But instead of swinging a bat or throwing a ball, he uses his profound skills in business and maths to make sure that the maximum number of fans get to see San Francisco's Boys of Summer play their games. Oh, and he also happens to be the son of the former host of this very program, Mr. John Stanley as well, so we're sure we'll have some interesting quips and tales to tell about his horror host, Papa. So don't go away, because it's going to be another night of Haunted House Fright, right here on Creature Features. See? I like Tom's version better. Oh, shush. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome back to Creature Features. It's that night. It's that fun night that we do once a week on Saturdays. And this week we're doing it with Russ Stanley. You know, um, we've been trying to get this bloke on the show forever. Why wouldn't you come on the show? A little, a little nervous. It's, uh, it is hard to find the manor. That's it. You know, I think we need to put signs up All that right. say, you know, pull to manor, drive this way. When I put in the GPS, it just had you driving in circles. Well, you know... That is, people try to find us with GPS, and you know, I own quite a bit of Google stock, and I was able to make an arrangement so that they would remove my estate from the whole mapping system. It was uh, actually rather complicated to accomplish, but uh, no, we have trouble with, you know, people show up and they say, oh, we would like to buy some explosives from Tangella. <laughs> and you know, we cannot sell explosives. We are not an authorized distribution center for explosives, so we had to like make it so people couldn't find us. So. Apologies in advance. Anyways, Russ is, what, what are you? You are like the general manager and owner of the Giants, <laughs> right? Not quite. Uh, senior vice president of ticketing. 
That is quite a title. It is, uh, and I shortened it for the So you show. know everything about tickets. Uh, I like to think so, but... Uh. So I've got this parking ticket. I'm wondering <laughs> if you could help me figure out... No. All right. So uh, we're going to talk about that. We're, we're going to talk about the team because you know right. everything about the team, wow. right? San Francisco Giants. You know, I, I'm not a baseball person, so I can root for any team. So I'm, I'm not like, you know, I'm agnostic. We'll right? recruit you to make sure you're a Giants you fan no, by I the time be. we're done. I should, I should be representing yeah. the city by the bay. All right. So we're going to watch uh, Terra in the Haunted House. And you've seen this film I before, have, I yeah. understand. So Tangela will not like it. Because there's no explosives. Well, you know, sometimes she'll like it if there's enough ghosts. Mm. So, you know, mm. and the best is exploding ghosts. So <laughs> if we can have anything like that, we're set. All right, well, let's get the film started. We're going to come back with Russ soon. Don't go away. You don't go away. And I'm stuck here for the evening. See you soon. of the old trees, I see the house again. It sits there waiting for me, silent, malignant, a place of unspeakable horror. There is no one there now. On a mailbox beside the driveway, I can make out the name of the people who lived there once. Tierney. But the Tierneys must have all gone away a long time ago. And the house stands like a moldering tombstone to a world that died. There is an old-fashioned knocker on the door. An unseen hand always opens the door for me. go up the shadowy stairway as if I know exactly where to find the answer to what has drawn me here. It's behind a little unmarked door and some unearthly power swings it open to receive me. I look up that narrow, dusty stairway, and for a moment that is so brief, so filled with terror that my mind cannot hold on to it, I know why I had to come to this place. <laughs> Did I go up the stairs this time, Doctor? No, it was the same as before. You almost bring yourself to see the truth, and then you... But what truth? All I know is that death in its most hideous form waits for me at the top of those stairs. That's not all you know, Mrs. Justin. You hold the answer deep within your own mind. Consciously, you've forgotten it. That's the way the human mind works. Whenever something is too unpleasant, too shameful for us to entertain, we reject it. 
we erase it from our memory. But the imprint is always there. Nothing is ever really forgotten. But don't all of us do things we're ashamed of? It wouldn't be human if we hadn't. And I'm quite human, Doctor. But there's nothing in my past that I couldn't tell my husband or that I haven't told you. I have never seen that house except in my dream. I, I can't connect it with any, any place or, or any one I've ever known. You're an orphan. Yes. You've lived most of your life here in Switzerland. Yes. I was sent here as a child for my health. Incipient tuberculosis from which you made a complete recovery. I'm strong as an ox now. Those uh, two years in the sanitarium, it's not a very happy time, was it? I don't have a very clear recollection of them now. These nightmares resumed about six weeks ago. Yes. You've been married about the same length of time. You're on the wrong track there, Doctor. I told Philip everything. It made very dull telling, I assure you. And now he's taking you back to America? Yes. You're happy about this, of course. I couldn't be happier. I love Switzerland, but after all, America's my real home. Well, perhaps it's for the best. These dreams may have some associations for you here in Switzerland. If so, I think it's quite possible you may leave these behind, too. At least we hope so. Well, that's certainly good news, Doctor. Dr. Farrell. Yes? You don't believe there's really any connection between my dreams and my marriage, do you? No, no, I... I merely noted the coincidence. But several times you suggested Philip come to see you. Why? I do that in most cases, Mrs. Justin. Sometimes the husband can be very helpful. Well, I know he always intended to come, but he had such a short time in Switzerland, and he loves to go up in the mountains alone. Mrs. Justin, your husband came to see me two weeks ago. Oh, yes, I, I believe it slipped my mind. Was it helpful, Doctor? I believe you've known your husband a very short time. Yes. We had what you call in America a whirlwind romance. Then whatever's causing these dreams occurred a long time before you met Philip Justin. Goodbye, Doctor. Bye, Mrs. Justin. And thank you for helping me. Passports, money, smallpox certificates. What about customs declarations? I'll give them to you on the plane. You'll have hours to fill them out. Don't be too excited. What did I do with the tickets? You got them right in your hand. I can see you're going to be very useful to have around. Oh, you have no idea. I'm glad we'll be flying at night. We can neck all the way across the Atlantic. You don't have to wait that long. It used to be a gag I pulled at college. We would take a girl down to the airport, bus depot, station, and watch the train or plane pull out. And then we'd kiss the girl goodbye. Unless well, she wouldn't be going anywhere. <laughs> but nobody would know that. All right, who was she? Oh, that was long ago. Come on, I told Dr. Farrell I confessed all to you. Now it's your turn. How was the session with Pharrell? No change. Now he tells me the dreams are caused by something scandalous I did and then forgot. Well, aren't you worried, darling? I may have a perfectly dreadful past neither one of us knows about. I don't believe you ever went to a station to watch the train pull up. You're so smug. These Swiss boys know a few tricks, too. Uh -huh. Well, they, all they ever did to you was yodel. First time I kissed you, your nose got in the way. Oh, you're learning. Keep on teaching, Professor.
guest of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. What's this? It is the power bill. Oh, blast. Has Tangella been running that dreaded Jacob's Ladder device? Or has Maurice been using that vile electric cooker again? Neither. The large bill is due to the number of lights and equipment that is required to produce this... this show. Well, I think this is one of the many occasions where we can get by with a little help from our friends. Our friends at home, that is. Dear friends at home, please consider becoming a patron for Creature Features. For just a few dollars a month, you can help cover this grisly power bill. But more importantly, with your generous support, we can do a myriad of other things to help keep you entertained every week, like get better movies or more guests. And we might even be able to create that Creature Features motion picture so many of you have asked for. And if you're willing to spend a little more with your friends here at Poulter Manor, there's some additional benefits as well. So visit the link below and become a patron member of the Creature Features family today. I will thank you, Tangella will thank you, and Livingston will merely raise an eyebrow in approval. You know, do psychologists still do the whole couch thing where they put people down on the couch? And I, I would assume so, yeah. Sure. You know, every psychologist I've ever been to did not have a couch. He had a chair. I think I need to upgrade my psychologists. Maybe Similar to the set. Maybe it's a British thing. Who knows? Anyways, we are with Russ Stanley. We are watching Terror in the Haunted House. Now, Russ, you are connected to our former host, John Stanley, but we're going to talk about that in a bit. You are famous for your business acumen in professional sports. How'd you get into this? Well, uh, growing up, I, I always wanted to play second base for the Giants. Right. That was my plan and got into high school and found out I couldn't hit a curveball uh, or a fastball for that matter. Well, uh, so I figured I had to go another route and I decided I wanted to take that love of baseball and turn that into a career. So when I got Which into college, I studied uh, marketing and business. And fortunately, in 1989, there was a job that opened up, and I landed a so job in sales. So you've been with them since 1989? Yeah, started in 89. Were you there during the earthquake? Right out. I got hired about two weeks after the earthquake. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I got hired because the, the earthquake hit, and a few people that they had hired didn't want to stay and, and wait for the, the uh, job to start. So I was available, and started the next day so the earthquake almost like opened a door for you yeah it opened some walls but <laughs> one, it opened the door one person's well. disaster is another person's fortune victory yeah right, right. Oh, wow. yeah i was very fortunate so you've been doing that since 1989 now you've probably met every single famous baseball player in the world uh, a lot of our players and a lot of our right. hall of famers are willie man you know I, I, as a kid growing up collecting baseball cards and you know my office sort of was my baseball cards coming alive. Willie McCovey, Ryan. Willie Mays. I know you're not a big baseball fan. No, but I'm Will familiar Clark, with all the names, though. Will Clark and Orlando Cepeda, uh, you know, became, has become a very good friend. And, right. and uh, it's been, I've been very fortunate, and it's been a great career working with all those people. And, and not too long ago, they won the World Series. We did. We won three out of five years in 2010. And, uh, 12 and 14. Oh, wonderful. And that's all you're doing, I bet. <laughs> no, no, no. If you don't have I enough fans in the stands, then there's not enough energy for the players to, right? That's true. And this is my theory. I could be wrong. <laughs> don't tell me if I am, though, because I think we should stick with this, right? Uh, I do think we play better, and it's a better uh, environment in the ballpark when, when you're full. And we had, we had 530 straight games where my we goodness. sold every ticket. So we every had a single great ticket. run there. Oh yeah. my goodness. No, and it's a beautiful stadium. It is. We, we have to get you out there. No, I want fact, to come. We've done, we've to done come. movies on the, on the grass there. I love that plan. Yeah. I love that plan. Well, speaking of movies, let's get back to Terror in the Haunted House. When we come back, we're going to talk some more about the Giants, right? Very good. All right, off we go. Back to Terror in the Haunted House, 1958. Don't you dare go away. Dream? 
No, I wasn't sleeping. I just remembered something awful. I forgot to have the initials and my luggage changed. <clears throat> well, it'll get through customs anyway. But they're all marked SW. Your family might think we're not married. I don't have any family, Sheila. Well, you never told me that, Philip. So much I don't know about you. Doesn't matter. Not really. But I want to know everything you did before you met me. What you do, where you come from, how you got along without me all these years. All these years I've been looking for you. I try to get some sleep. All right. Philip. Yes? Why didn't you tell me you went to see Dr. Farrell? I did tell you. Don't you remember? No. I guess I didn't hear you. That's the right road. It's creepy looking. I wish we'd stayed in New York. You need a quiet place where you can rest for a couple of weeks. You make me sound like an invalid. Well, you did have that dream again last night. Yes. said you've never been in Florida before. How could you have seen it? I never saw it before, but that's the house. Oh, Philip, I'm frightened. It's an old, empty house. Why are you afraid of a house? I don't know. Whatever's inside, it's horrible. I don't know what it is. There's nothing to be afraid of. An empty house can't hurt you. Same house. You know that's impossible. Look, you dreamed of an old house. The first one you see reminds you of it. You simply made the transference in your mind. You've got to be sensible. You can't dream about a place you've never seen. It's exactly the same. Those trees, those storm windows. It must be the attic. Every old house has an attic. Do we have to go in there? Yes. It'll be good for you. Once you realize there's nothing in there that can hurt you, the dream will go away. Beside, darling. I'll be with you every minute. Caretaker. And I'm Justin, the new resident. Oh, you come to the wrong place. This house ain't never rented. It is now. 
Well, they would have told me about it. I've just told you we've rented the house. We're going to live here. Now you know. Lie down. Frightened, darling. I'll go out and get the bags. You wait right here. My husband took the house on short notice. I'm sure you'll be notified by mail in a day or two. <laughs> There ain't been no mail here for the last 17 years. It's been empty that long? Mm-hmm. Must have been a lovely home once. What happened to the people who lived here? They went away. One by one, they went away, except me. Isn't it lonely for you? Lonely? No. It ain't lonely. I got my dog. You see, I'm waiting for them to come back. That's why I keep it like it was. For them. For whom? Well, the folks it belongs to. It's theirs. That, that's why I try to keep it looking nice. What was... What's their name? We carry the bags upstairs and we decide which bedroom we're going to use. I take it. I go up there. Along the railing to the left, there's a bedroom. With hideous wallpaper. Huge, awful-looking flowers on it. You never mentioned going into a bedroom in your dream. No, I didn't. Maybe I see it as I go past. is closed. About it. What does it mean to you? It means I'm going to die here. Oh, Philip, take me away. I can't stay here. I can't. I'll go out of my mind. All right, darling. We'll go away. A can of gasoline. It isn't bad. Thanks, half full.
This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, I can understand her, but you have me completely confused here. You are not alone. What is... These what are is my that? peeps. He's, he's beginning to become humorous. I cannot discourage this. However, next time I think we should get you, like, devil horns. With, like, pink ones. Now, that would be more appropriate mm -hmm. for her. No, no. She looks very, very Halloween-y tonight. No, it looks like Halloween. No? We got the green. Oh, it's Easter. That's right. Tomorrow is Easter. So make sure you put out some eggs for the children. All right. We got to do mail, right? Yes. Because we kicked out our guest. If we kick out a guest, we must do mail. That's the rules of the, the household, right? The house rules. All right. What do you got for me, Mr. Livingston? This is a big letter. Let's find out what it is. The address. Oh, it's from Livermore. The place with the sails. All right. Happy Easter from Joanne Duncan in Livermore, California. And uh, she goes, Dear Vince Tangella and Livingston, I hope all is well at the mansion. Please in find enclosed caricatures of yourselves. Mm. These are rough sketches from a raw amateur, but I thought they might amuse you. May your hauntings be chilling, your guests be amusing, and your Easter be shock full of surprises or oh, oh my goodness so this is me you know she's she's good she's she has promise all right here's tangella you know i like your hair better in this photo than in the way it is in real life now you look you look uh you look regal in this portrait and then uh mr livingston This, no, it looks exactly like him, except without the bunny ears. Peeps. Right? No, these these are wonderful. Well, you know, at least you don't look like a love doll like I do. A love doll? Well, you know, the whole mouth open thing. I see. I don't, you know, I don't know. That's what somebody said downstairs in the mail room. Somebody drew a love doll picture of you. So uh, thank you, Joanne, so much. And send us more. We like those. We love those. There's a package. Oh, a box. Who's this from? Oh, my. This is not for me. I can tell you this. All right. This is from Kurt Burkhart in Los Angeles. We don't have many, many viewers in Los Angeles. You know why? They have better programs to watch in Los Angeles than our show. I, I would imagine. No. Well, they have Elvira. Really? The reruns of Elvira. I don't know. I imagine she's still operating. I thought she down retired. There. You know, I used to be friends with her. Used to be. No. Well, well, as soon as I started doing the show, she didn't like me anymore. Her and Shatner must go have coffee and speak ill about me. All right, uh, dear creature features. I hope this finds you all well at the manor. I wrote to you before, so I will keep this much shorter than my previous novel-length communication. I'm a lifelong fan of this type of programming, and I think you are all my all-time favorite. Thank you for keeping the faith for all of us. I love the interaction between you, Vincent, the charming host, Livingston with his solemn grace, and of course the mischievous and lovely Tangella. Well, you know, she's mischievous, which is a level about here, but she's... Dangerous. Up to this, dangerous. So she's improved a bit. 
Please find this gift for her collection of oddities. My apologies to Livingston, who seems to be menaced by many of Tangela's beasties. If you ever have a chance to show Blood on Satan's Claw, it would fit nicely with your programming. It's a 70s schlock fest and caused me to leave the nightlight on after my older brother allowed me to watch it on the old Chilla TV show. You know, I think that's one that's on a to-do list. I believe so. I saw it. I saw it in a folder of things. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, Kurt, and I hope things are well in Los Angeles. You know, he doesn't say where in Los Angeles. There is no place called Los Angeles. It's like all different communities. Like I lived in Brentwood. Well, you know, maybe Kurt lives in Hollywood, because that's where you would get something like this. Hollywood. They don't. Oh my goodness! Look at her. All right, take it, take it. All right, you got more mail for me, sir? I do. What have you for me? An email from E.R. Jones in Delaware. And he goes, uh, hello to the esteemed Mr. Vandal, Mr. Livingston, and Tangella. I have discovered your delightful show on YouTube and have been catching up on your show. Your cavalcade, uh, how do you say that word? Cavalcade. Cavalcade. A cavalcade. What is a cavalcade? It is a presentation by a group. No, I think it's like an avalanche, but spelled different. A cavalcade of stars. We're going to have to look this up afterwards. All right, one more time. Your cavalcade of engaging guests is an excellent diversion, pairing with your diverse and divergent film selections, like fine wine to make a feast of entertainment. One question: Did Tangella come with a mansion? Thanks for your time, E.R. Jones, Delaware. All right, so um, she did not come with this mansion, but she ended up in my previous estate. Beverly right? Hills. Brentwood, to be specific, but I would never live in Beverly Hills. So when I had a huge party and I woke up and there was, everyone was gone except for three girls hiding in the closet and she was one and two of them left. So, you know, got down to one. All right, thanks for writing, E.R. Jones. Last letter. Uh, it's a card, I believe. It's a card. All right, what do we got here? Oh, I know who this is from. Oh, I know who this is from. Happy Easter. I love Easter. And this is from our friend Ted Oakman in Castro Valley, who writes us a letter every single day, right? At least one per at day. At least one per day. No, no, no doubt. He writes us at least one per day, and it's always the same thing. It's about um, the... Uh, UFO in Oakville and the ghost. And he has a, a large thing that he says here. And you know what? We love you, Ted. Keep writing to us. But I cannot read every single one of your letters every day because you would monopolize all of our letter time. But thank you for the wonderful card. It's beautiful. Is that it? That's it. That is it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter of your own, use the email address you see appearing by my shoe. Or if you'd like to send a wonderful creature like this one, send it to the address you see down here. We're going to be right back with Mr. Russ Stanley, but first let's get back to Terror in the Haunted House. have been pulled out. The distributor cap is missing. Jonah. Why? He tried to keep us from staying here. Why did he do it? I don't know. For some reason, he changed his mind. Can't you repair it? I could probably fix the wires, but without the distributor cap, we're stuck here. on the mailbox. What? You asked me who used to live here. You can still see the name on the mailbox. Tierney. Why did they all leave? Why? <laughs> Nobody knows why they ever did anything. They was all the same. The whole family. 
Folks around here used to call him the, the Mad Tennis. Didn't you know that? No. Then how come you know the name? You didn't see the name on the mailbox. I watched you come. I don't know how I knew. Maybe I've been here before. A long time ago. No. I would have remembered you. I've always been here. If you'd been here before, I would have remembered. It's all vaguely familiar. Like... Like something that happened when you were a small child. What do you remember? I'm not sure. I can see myself as a little girl playing in the grass. There was a boy. He was older than I was. I think I was in love with him. I think he carved our initials on the trunk of a tree, a big old palm tree. It's all so vague. I don't know where it came from. I know every tree on this plantation. I would have seen them initials. Maybe it was someplace just like this. I thought I heard your voice. Jonah came back. Oh? Well, he's gone again. I tried to keep him talking till you came down. Did you ask him why he disabled the car? I was afraid to. He acts so queer. He's been living here alone too long. I'm sorry there's no coffee. None of the stoves in here work. This is fine. Philip. Yes? Did you bring that gun with you? Yes, in my suitcase. Why? I don't know. That, that dog frightens me. So does Jonah. I'll just feel better knowing you have it. I took a walk. I tried to find you. And then that dog came after me. He's out there. Stay here. Jonah! Light up! Jonah! Get this animal out of here and tie him up. Well, I had him locked up in the cell. Somebody must have let him out. If anybody let him out, it was you. Now take him back and tie him up. If he gets loose again, I'll shoot him. Yes, sir. Come on, Jacob. Come with you.
Everything's all right now. Don't worry. What ever made you go prowling around in the dark? There was someone looking in that window. A hideous, inhuman face. You weren't here. I was so frightened. It had to be Jonah. There's no one else around here for miles. For some reason, he's trying to scare us away from here. Why? He disabled our car to keep us here. I don't know. I'm going to find out right now. Philip. Don't worry. Just lock the door. You'll be safe here. I'll be back in five minutes. All right. Take your gun. I can handle it. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are still watching Terror in the Haunted House, 1958, with the legendary Russ Stanley from the San Francisco Giants. You were telling me during the break, 1958 was the year that the New York Giants moved to San Francisco. Yeah, that was a very special year. Uh, you had three teams in New York, and two of them decided to move west, and that was Horace Stoneham brought the Giants to San Francisco, and that brought baseball Right. to the West Coast, and the Dodgers went from Brooklyn to Los Angeles. And they've been there ever since. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Yankees we have a new park remain. since then. Yeah, the Yankees stayed, uh, and then the Mets came in, I think, 62. There was a, a window of four years that there right. was no other baseball team. The Yankees right. were solo. That's amazing. That's, you know, it was like nothing here before 1958. Right. 
That's you you had uh, uh, Pacific Coast League teams that were sort of the minor leagues right. of professional baseball. But, I mean, at that time, you know, only, probably only had half the teams that you have today. So that fantastic stadium that is the home base of the Giants, you help orchestrate that. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Oracle Park. Right. And uh, I was part of the, the group. There was many of us that helped to get that park built. Uh, but I was part of the charter seat program where we sold seat licenses to our season ticket holders. And uh, It's yeah. a beautiful park. Yeah, I'm very proud. I, I, I tell you, I mean, it's it right looks there brand the new water. today. Yeah. You could, like, pull your yacht if I had one. <laughs> yeah. Pull your yacht. Sell your right Google up. stock and you can yeah. buy the yacht. How wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful park. And after 20 years, I, I still call it the new ballpark. And I spent 10 years at Candlestick, well, it is which the you newest never got one, to see. Right? Uh, it is our newest one, yeah. Right. There's other other ballparks in baseball that have opened since then. Of but, course, of course. Yeah. But in for us, yeah. Yes, of course. It's still a new right. ballpark. Right. So speaking of that new ballpark, you've had Creature Feature Nights there before. We have. We've had a couple of them. Uh, special events. And you, you talked about how we fill the ballpark. So right. when there's nights or days when we feel like we have extra inventory, we'll run special events. And we've run a couple of Creature Feature Nights. Uh, and they were nights so that we could run a, a movie on the scoreboard after the game. So we let fans, Creature Feature fans, went How on the wonderful. field. And, uh, so it's almost like a drive-in with no <laughs> automobiles. A drive-in with no car, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, you put a blanket down, it was, it was great. And uh, plenty of concession stands. Uh, I think we had popcorn and soda. It wasn't quite uh, full-blown concession Not stands. Not the gourmet hot no, dogs that one can normally No, we didn't uh, have garlic, famous obtain. garlic fries. But, right, right. Uh, it, was, it was great. And, How uh, fun. And this would be something that again. would occur after a game. Yeah. Uh, right. So, you know, the games are... You know, it was a six o'clock game over at nine. Right. We started the movie around ten, and uh, we always had a special guest. How uh, fun. We had Barbara from uh, Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead to watch Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> yeah, well, of course. How wonderful. I wonder how many times she's seen that movie. Yeah. I wonder how many times people say, "Oh, they're coming to get you, Barbara." <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I bet she's sick of that. All right, I'm getting the signal. We got to get back to the film, okay. but when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about your papa. Great, Mr. John Great. Stanley. <laughs> But first, uh, let's get back to the movie and uh, see what happens next, right? Very right? good. Good. See you soon. Bye. We have coffee this morning. Here we go. Ah, drink this, huh? Slept badly. The dream again, huh? I wasn't dreaming. I found the door to the attic. I told you, all these old houses have attics. I recognized it the instant I saw it. It was just like in my dream. Was it? I don't remember. But you must remember. Don't you see, once you understand what it all means, you'll never have the dreams again. Is that why you brought me to this house, Philip? Darling, I brought you here for rest and to get over the dreams. But why to this house? How did you know where it was? I didn't even know. How did you find it? It's only the same house in your imagination. You're lying! Why are you doing this to me? Why? Finish your breakfast, I'll be downstairs.
W. Sheila Wayne. house and I'd appreciate an explanation of what you're doing here. My husband rented it. Then in that case I'd like to speak with your husband if I may. He should be back any moment. He's gone for a walk. Is something wrong Mr. Snell? You said your husband rented the house Mrs. Uh... Mrs. Justin. Yes that's right. He rented it. From whom? I'm not sure. From a realtor I suppose. This house is not in the hands of a realtor and no one has approached me to rent it. And I wouldn't be interested in any case. I believe my caretaker informed you of that last night. Well, yes, he did. I'm sure my husband can explain satisfactorily when he comes back. Mrs. Justin, I don't want to appear to be unpleasant, but I'm not interested in explanations. You and your husband will have to leave this house immediately. Yes, I'm terribly sorry. You see, Mrs. Justin, the house has been closed up for a good many years. It's not even fit to live in. It's not safe. As a matter of fact, the electricity's been turned off. So if you fell through the floor or stumbled on the stairs, I'd be liable. I'm sure you understand. Of course. As a matter of fact, we, we started to leave last night, but, but the car... Her car wouldn't start. Well, I'm not very much of a mechanic, but what seems to be the trouble? My husband said the distributor had been stolen. Stolen? By whom? There's no one around here for miles except Jonah, my caretaker. And I can assure you, he wouldn't do anything to delay your departure. On the contrary, he did his best to frighten us away. Oh? Well, all I can suggest is that you get in the car and drive with me to the nearest garage and have a mechanic sent back. I can't go until my husband comes. Mrs. Justin, the idea is for both of you to leave. Suppose we refuse to leave. What are you going to do about it? Philip, good Lord, I have no idea. Your wife said that her name I is... ask you how you intend to make us leave. Why on earth would you want to stay in an old place like... You could run us off, huh? With an axe. I simply said that the house was dangerous. Naturally, if you want to stay here under these conditions, you're perfectly welcome. <laughs> well, I'm not being a very good host. It's been many years, Philip. We've lost touch with you. Where have you been? In Europe. Oh, Switzerland. Philip and I were married recently. In Lausanne. I hope I'm not interrupting our honeymoon if I stay a few days. Now that I'm here, I thought I'd look the old place over and see if there's anything that could be done with it. You don't mind, do you, Philip? It's yours, isn't it? I'm afraid most of that went over my head. Philip never mentioned that he knew you. Or that you owned the house. What did he say? Nothing, really. He must have given you some explanation for bringing you back here. Back here? Then I have been here before. I... I don't know. But you said back here. That's what you meant. You know I've been here before, don't you? Don't you? This is a place you could never forget. You do remember being here, don't you, Mrs. Tierney? I'm not sure. Why did you call me Mrs. Tierney? Did I? I meant Mrs. Justin, of course. S.W. and P.T. Philip Tierney. That's his name, isn't it? 
Look at me, Mr. Snell. I want to know it's true, isn't it? Yes. Philip is the last of the Tierneys. The last of the mad Tierneys. That's what they're called, isn't it? And those initials on that old tree, S.W. Sheila Wayne, those are my initials, aren't they? He carved them when I was just a little girl. Don't you remember any of it? It's all so vague. It, it all comes back to me in little bits and pieces. I, I try to fit them together and they fade away. I, I was ill in, in the sanitarium in Switzerland for a long time. My memory always seems to start in the sanitarium. Before that, it, it's like a thick mist. What does it all mean? These are questions for your husband to answer, Mrs. Tierney, not me. I wish I could help you, but I can't. It would have been better if you had never left Switzerland. You should never have come to this house. There's something evil here. It's bad for Philip. He wasn't like this in Switzerland. What is there about this house that makes him like he is? Possibly only Philip knows. I urge you for your own safety to leave this house at once. Take my car if you like, but get away from here. Now. My name is Max, I'm from Rochester, New Hampshire, and I just want to say that when I was a kid, I used to watch Creature Feature every Saturday, and I have to admit, you guys are good. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. You know, I need to get a hairstyle like you, Russ Stanley. <laughs> oh no, you don't. No, it's it's so much easier to maintain. Look at look at the misery I'm I got through. Of you. Every Saturday night, maintaining this mop, <laughs> just to look like a pretentious fop. But it keeps my head warm in this cold manner. Go. That's my justification. <laughs> it's the only one I have. All right. So, um, quickly on Terra in the haunted house. Have you been noticing these subliminal <laughs> messages? It's called, what's it called, Tom? Psychorama. Psychorama, right? We've got one of them here. We're going to pop it up big. But this was one of the <laughs> subliminal messages. Scream louder with this guy. But, you know, it's, it's not like real subliminal because, you know, real subliminal would just be like one frame, right? And you could see this. So it's not one frame. They're doing like five frames or ten frames, which is, it's not subliminal. So don't worry. You won't be like, Psychopath from watching this film. You look like it, a psychopath. It's from an watching interesting this approach. Film. Uh, from the marketing side, maybe we ought to do something like that. I think you're just bored <laughs> to death. Well, speaking of marketing, your father would never put <laughs> subliminal messages on his show, would he? I've never noticed that. On uh, maybe in Nightmare and Blood, there were subliminal messages: clean your room, mow the lawn. I'm not sure. Did you did you actually do that? I, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you were influenced by subliminal messages to be a good lad. In order to get a, a cameo in Night, uh, Nightmare were, in Blood. Were I, you in Nightmare in Blood? Absolutely. Where? Yeah. 
uh, I was in the comic book store. Gary Arlington's oh, comic book store. Yeah. No, I remember that scene. Oh, everybody does. Right. Yeah, it, it's so most people's you, screensaver. What are you doing in the... Uh, in the in the comic book store? Right. I was buying a comic. That's I, it. I, I think just, I've got money in my hand even. You just, do you have a line? Or like, I'm reading a comic. Hello, sir, oh, I no. would like to buy if this comic. If I had a line, you would have had to pay me. Oh. Or the union would have called. No, he's cheap that I didn't way, have an after he? card. No, I couldn't no, have done no. it. All right. Well, you're in that. So what was it like having a horror host for a father? Uh, you know, it was interesting. Uh, it certainly uh, gave me an opportunity to do things that most kids didn't get to do. Like? Uh, well, to go on Creature Features. We, uh, my third grade class was the audience uh, oh, for a... Uh, it, that was actually when Bob was the host. Right. And uh, they were doing a uh, trivia my dad had written a comic book trivia right. book, and so they did a game show. And my third grade class was the audience. Oh, how wonderful. So it was really, it was fun. Uh, but it was different. You know, friends would come over. I'd go to someone's house, and you'd hear music like Led Zeppelin or right. Carlos Santana. You go to my house, and it's Bernard Herman or Bernard uh, Herman. John it's Williams. Like jazz, <laughs> and I'll write the big movie themes. Yeah, you'd walk well, around and get Jaws. So, but like as Jaws a horror chasing. house, the son of a horror house, I bet you got to meet, like, Chewbacca. I did. Uh, we did. Uh, Peter Mayhew. We actually had dinner with Peter Mayhew. Had dinner and, with uh, Peter Mayhew. C three PO. Uh, and C three. Yeah. C a, a lot of great opportunities. Uh, I remember as a pretty young, when he was a writer with the Chronicle, I got to hang out with Clint Eastwood for a day, when no. he was filming. Uh, you hung Magnum out with Force. Clint Eastwood. Yeah, we were we were there watching him film. He let me hold the gun and. Uh, oh my goodness, that's. that's it was a lot incredible. of fun. He told me to get off his lawn. I don't, I don't know why. No, I don't blame him. <laughs> no, if Clint Eastwood tells you to get off of his lawn, you, you get off of it. That's, Absolutely. It's a known fact. He will shoot you in the face. <laughs> no, it's, you will leave that lawn wearing a bullet if you're on Clint Eastwood's lawn and he instructs you to go. All right, we need to uh, wrap up this movie. So let's get back to the film. And when we come back, okay. we've got a little surprise for you. Don't go away. Philip. Tell me the truth, Philip. Why did you bring me to this house? For your own good. You knew I'd been here before. Yes. I knew. We lived here as children. I remember that last night after we'd been here a little while. So hazy, I couldn't quite make out the face of the boy who carved our initials on the tree. I was in love with you then. That must be why I fell in love with you so quickly in Switzerland. I told Dr. Farrell we had a whirlwind romance. It wasn't really. I'd been in love with you for, for years and years. I love you, Sheila. Do you? I love you very, very much. And why did you bring me to this place? To this horrible, evil house? So you would get over the nightmares. They were destroying you, Sheila. In no time, they'd have you back in the sanitarium. Sanitarium? I was sent there because of my lungs. Wasn't I, Philip? No, darling. You're trying to tell me that... I was sent away to Switzerland because I was... insane? Sheila, you'd had a nervous breakdown. A nervous breakdown? I was seven years old. A child of seven doesn't have a nervous breakdown. I was insane, wasn't I? Sheila, there's nothing wrong with you now except those nightmares. I brought you here to regain your health. There's only one way to cure you. No, Philip. You must go up in that attic. I can't, I can't. There's something waiting for me up there. If I climb those stairs, I'll die. I know that. Darling, it's all in your imagination. I'll be with you every step of the way. Please, you must do this. Don't ask me to do that, Philip. I can't. I won't.
Tierney. Died November 4th, 1939. Born to Matthew and Bliss Tierney. Son Lawrence. Died November 4th, 1939. Born a daughter, Lydia. January 18th, 1920. Born a son, Samuel. Died November 4th, 1939. Born to Samuel and Anne Tierney. Son, Philip. Philip. The last of the mad Tierneys. Jonah. I was just looking at the family Bible. It belonged to my husband's grandfather, didn't it? Did you know him? I knowed him. I knowed him all. Matthew Tierney had two sons and a daughter. They's all dead now. I, I can see that. Jonah. It says that Matthew and his sons, Lawrence and Samuel, all died on the same day. November 4th, 1939, at midnight. What happened, Jonah? Was there an accident, all of them dying at once? The strain died out, all except him. Philip. But, but what caused it? He... He's seen death coming for him. Well, he was 84, and, and it was his time. Matthew was... Matthew died of old age, but... But Lawrence and, and Philip's father, they were both young men. He's seen what he had to do. The curse of the Tierneys was on him, and he could see it. He brought him into this world, and, and he took him out again before he died. You mean, the old man, his two sons? He, he, he watched for it all the time they was growing up. He looked for it to show up, and, and it did, like in all the tyrannies. They, they was tainted. He knowed he had to wipe it out b before he was taken. There was only one way, blood. There was some blood all over everything. The, the place run with the blood of the mad tyrannies. I, I took the axe out myself and buried it. Horrible. He done what he had to do. Then he laid down and died himself. But he missed one. Philip. Yeah. He was away, up north. That's what saved him. And he's the last. He's come back because he knows he's got it, too. He's marked, like all the others. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Go away, miss. Go away before it's too late. Ain't nothing you can do for him. I seen it in him j just the same as in all others. Yeah. Show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, 
making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Angela, this arrived for you today. Try not to eat it all before Easter. Do you like those? Oh dear. John, I've, uh, I've taken care of it. I won't put up with carelessness. You know that. I know, I know. Mrs. Tierney might have been killed. Now look, you've been around here for a long time, and if you want to keep your home, you see that nothing goes wrong from now on. Do you understand? Philip. Philip. Get away from me. You're going to listen to me for once. I don't know what you're up to or why you ever came back here, but I can tell you this. You're only going to make matters worse for yourself. And maybe that's the way you like it. And tell me, why do you insist on pulling your wife down with you? How much more do you think she can stand? You've nearly driven her out of her mind now. Or is that what you're trying to do, Philip? What do you think I'm trying to do? Take her away from here at once if you've got any sense left. Why are you so concerned about Sheila? Because if she stays in this house another night, she'll be a raving maniac. I'll drive her to town myself. Sheila stays here with me. Why? Because she has nightmares, Mark. Didn't she tell you that? She was going to a psychiatrist in Switzerland to find out what caused them. Doctor couldn't help her, but I can. I know exactly what to do. And when she's better, everything's going to be all right again. For her, for me, and for all the tyrannies, dead or alive. You'd hate that, wouldn't you, Mark? You've always hated the tyrannies. You're insane. You're really out of your mind. something. I can't. Where is my... Where is he? He went away about an hour ago, as soon as it was dark. You should eat something. He tried to kill me. It could have been an accident. I told you how old and rotten the house was. The chandelier probably just broke away. No, he was up there. If Jonah hadn't shouted at Why? He said he loved me. I'm sure he does. But at other times, he's not responsible for what he does. You see, in a way, you're a threat to him. Philip is the last of the tyrannies, unless you have a child. And in his own tortured mind, he knows that this must never happen. Let me explain. With each generation, the wild strain and the tyrannies becomes not less, but more pronounced. Do you understand? But why did he marry me? Why doesn't he leave me? He loves you. You're his one hold on sanity, and at the same time, the one thing that, that's driving him to do what his grandfather did. I know. Jonah told me. I didn't want to believe it. I'm afraid it's true. You see, Sheila, Philip is my cousin. Yes. My mother was Lydia Tierney. She died in childbirth in 1925. I grew up here with Philip until he went up north to school. When the old man... Why didn't he... You mean, why didn't Grandfather kill me, too? Oh, I don't know. I suppose it's... It's because uh, I really wasn't like a Tierney. I was a snail. When I was growing up, I didn't understand it at the time. Grandfather Tierney was very hard on me, almost cruel. He must have decided 
I had escaped the curse of his line. He knew he was mad. I think he did. It came in spells. Well, he used to lock himself away in his room for days at a time. What will become of Philip? I don't know. I'm more concerned with what will become of you. You must leave here as soon as it's daylight. I take you away tonight, but my car's been disabled too. Couldn't we walk? No. It's 15 miles, and along those winding roads, we'd probably lose our way or wind up in the marshes. But that's better than staying here. No. He's outside somewhere, watching the house. You'll be safer here. Besides, Jono and I are going to take turns standing watch outside your door. You may not get much sleep, but I can promise you nothing will happen to you. Thank you. Are you sure you don't want something to eat? Good night. Good night. touch with him. I understand your car broke down. I thought you might fix it. I can try. Who's going to drive? She, she, she can't. I was merely suggesting that she might like to drive into town with me. This has been an awful shock for her. I'll go. This is Livingston, 
and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are honored to have the elusive John Stanley. <laughs> you know, we, we were going to bring him out earlier. He's, he's giving Russ a ride. He's like <laughs> Russ's Uber driver tonight. Right. Here's my GPS. <laughs> no, it's, it's I wouldn't have found the manor without him. I know. Oh. He's the one that guides you. So no, he's here to make sure Russ gets home in one piece because, you know, <laughs> we invited Russ to stay overnight and John told him that's not a good idea. Hmm. Right? Yeah. How come he gets more screen time than I do? Because <laughs> you've been on this show 10,000 times. No, uh, you you were on our first episode. 9,476 you were on our first episode. is the correct number. Yes. Is that it? All right. Yeah. I, I have not been keeping count. So how are you, John? Uh, quite well. Uh, oh, it's time to celebrate uh, with the top hmm. hats. Here we I go. feel like I'm a Ted king. Jello's with it's us It's a big as party. Well. I've just been crowned. You know, you look like Mr. Peanut. <laughs> or am I a crow? Oh, the sure. Monopoly man. I'm not no, sure you look which. like you look like a, you almost look like w, a thin version WC of WC Fields. Thank, Fields. You. Thank you for clarifying. A very thin version of WC Fields, <laughs> and you look like Mr. Peanut. We should just remove part of your glasses to oh, make them Oh, that's monocle. why I'm cracked. Uh -huh, I'm exactly. A peanut. Right. Yeah. Oh my God! Okay. You know those? <laughs> neither of those hats will fit on my head. I have such a, Are you I have a sure? huge cranium. Are you sure? We'd be glad to try to get them on your no, head. No, I've tried. Yeah, I've tried we'll especially this one. Down. You know, this one is an actual antique, and it's the pop kind. Huh. Try it. No, it's serious. It's a pop. Squish All it. All I can do is squish thank it. Thank you. No, squish it. Squish it. <laughs> Push it down, Dan. Squish it, bloke. Uh, I, I know, say, old it. chap. There you oh. go. Oh. Now it keeps it portable. Anyways, uh, John's joining us. You're working on a book. Yes. What's it going to be called? A career filled with horror. A career <laughs> filled with horror. I may even call it a career that dripped with horror. That dripped with horror. Yes. Well, how does horror drip? <laughs> I mean, would it be better to... Um, well, you know a drip, don't you? Oh, I know many drips. Just look in the mirror. For, oh, look, he's getting witty with me. And for that, you get to <laughs> oh, wear the geez. tiara. Oh. You have been awarded the tiara. Uh, and princess. Your son oh, has been I'm made. Afraid the, I am a king. He's a bat. Yep. He's a bat. <laughs> no, so Tangela much. has a, a tradition of humiliating some of our guests. But hmm. she, won't, she would not do it to Clint Eastwood. Right? No, I don't blame her. She hmm. knows she, she might be victimized by Clint Eastwood. Oh, Clint Eastwood. But, uh, so you've been having fun. You do the riding between retirement activities, right? Like you, you play golf and hunt, <laughs> right? Not really. I'm. Uh, I heard he's quite the jet skier. <laughs> Is that true? Quite what? The jet skier. Oh, big jet uh, ski. Russ, oh, keep him off the water. Was a jet skier when he was uh, a uh, youth. No. I never really wanted to. You were a skier. jet setter. <laughs> yeah. A jet setter. A jet. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got a bit of yeah. surprise for both of you. Our okay. director, Tom, has dug up a clip of both of you at the same time quite a few years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Hmm. You ready? Is All right. This one went to jail. Watch the clip. Here it comes. Here comes the clip. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Erica Jones, my wife. Come here. <laughs> what are you doing here? I don't know. Get out of here. Get out. And Karen. My son's girlfriend. Come over here, Karen. What do you have to say about Marine World? Oh. <laughs> mm, I like that better than Marine World. <laughs> Russ, you run the water slide at Marine World. You better watch your step. And I want you to meet a very... So, uh, ah. yes, uh, you were quite the ladies' man, I see. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, uh, you spent a lot of time with my girlfriend at the time. Uh, but I'm a little upset you chased mom off. Hmm, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> 
No, I well, have no it, idea. It was, that was, that that was, was from, so long ago, Russ. Yeah. That was from your final broadcast August of Creature Features. August the 1st, 1984. August the 1st, 1984. Yeah. So until we did our first version of the show, there was just this black hole of no Creature Features. Yeah, it had been on the air for, uh, I think it was four, 14 years. 14 um, years Bob total. had started it in right. 1971. And uh, I, com I took it over in 79 through uh, 1984. That's wonderful. Yeah, we kept yeah. it alive for yeah, you did. 14 years. I don't know of any other Bay Area program that perhaps lasted that long. No, maybe not even Dialing for Dollars, right? <laughs> well. <laughs> no, we should do Dialing for Dollars. Except we could, we could do it for like Dialing for Daggers. <laughs> and then she could be the host, right? There you go. Hostess. Perfect. Yes. yes. Dialing for daggers. All yeah. right. Well, thanks for sitting in for this little piece of the film, John. And well, uh, you're going to join you us. for playing. You're going to join us for some food after? Yes, I will. Good. So we're going to feed the man yeah. because it's important as for us. As long as do. Russ gets plenty of food, too. <laughs> we, we will all get plenty of food. All right. Let's get back to this film. And uh, when we come back, we're going to find out what Russ is doing next. So don't you dare go away. Back to Terra in the Haunted House. See you soon. How long before the police will get here? It won't be tonight. He won't go to the police. He'll just keep on going. There's nothing else he can do. It's better that it's happened this way, my dear. You'll forget in time. Go down and see. You wait here. turn I must have gotten lost where's Jonah I don't know I heard a noise came down to investigate his body's gone that's strange yes isn't it the dead man gets up and walks away maybe he wasn't dead that's ridiculous his neck was broken you saw him I didn't examine him you did well don't you think we ought to go look for the body no I think you should do what you started out to do Go for the police. I don't want to get lost again. I don't know the roads around here. Somebody's got to go. How about you? Well, I can't. My car's broken down. I'll fix it. Besides, I don't want to leave Sheila here alone. She won't be alone, Mark. I'll be with her. You wait here a minute. I'll be right back. Jonah's body, probably in the cellar. 
We've got to get word of the police. He won't go, and he won't let me take you with me. Well, couldn't we? No, he won't give us that much time. Have you still got his gun? Yes. All right, now listen carefully. There's a farmhouse about five miles from here. I can go there and get back in about 20 minutes. He'll expect me to be gone for hours. Now, when I leave this room, you lock the door. Use the gun if you have to. If you'd only wait till morning. No, this is what he wants us to do. If we stay in this house tonight, he'll finish his horrible job. Our only chance is to act faster than he does. Do you think you can do it? I'll try. Good. You guard the fire escape with a gun, and I think you can hold him off until I get back. Good luck. Take you away. You've got to trust me. trigger, Sheila, and it'll be the end of the tyrannies. Don't make me do it, Philip. I don't want to. Pull the trigger, Sheila. You can go downstairs and write the final entry in the family Bible. Philip Tierney died here and now, the last of the mad tyrannies. I can't. Do whatever you want to, Philip. I don't care. If I'm your enemy, if that that's what your mind tells you, then go ahead and do it. You could have killed me. Why didn't you? I don't know. Yes, I do know. Because I love you. So many years ago, long before you carved our initials on that tree, I can't remember any further back. I loved you. When we met in Switzerland. I didn't know it, but it was the same love. That's why I married you, Philip. That's why I could never hurt you. I don't want to hurt you either. But you feel you must. Is that it, Philip? Well, let me help you. Don't look away. I want to help you. Everything's going to be all right now. Let me help you. Tell me how. Will you do anything I ask? Anything? Anything. What do you want me to do? Come with me right now. All right. Here. Take this. Please, I want you to have it. Listen to me. There's nothing up there to be afraid of. 
It's just an egg. Full of dust and cobwebs. When you were a little girl, it was your favorite place to play in rainy days. You remember. This trunk full of old clothes. You used to dress up in them. Remember, darling? No. It'll all come back to you. Believe me. It will. It'll all come back to you. Everything. Don't open the door! I can't even look if you want to kill me. Kill me here, but don't torture me. Sheila! Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. brought me back here, wasn't it, Philip? Yes, dear. I tried to run away, but I couldn't. It was buried inside my mind. I didn't remember. I, I couldn't remember. I would have... I would have been insane. I was insane in that sanitarium, wasn't I? You saw the kind of horror no child should see. Your mind locked it away so you'd never see it again. You knew it was there. And you had to dig it out. I searched for years. I found you in Lausanne. But the secret was hidden in your subconscious. Only you and the person who used the axe knew what really happened up here. I had to dig it out. You caused the dreams to start. You took me to Dr. Farrell. And then when nothing else worked, you brought me here. You want to know what happened that night, Philip? I remember now. We lived in a little house by a stream, my father and I. He was a caretaker. You were one of the family. I remember. They used to let me play up here on rainy days. It rained that day. I forgot my doll. And I woke up late at night and crept back in the house to get it. I came 
came up here. And then I heard someone coming up the stairs. I hid under this bed. And then I saw them. Your father and your Uncle Lawrence. And then he killed them. Who did? Who was it? With the axe. The blood spurted clear across the room. It was all over me. It was all over me. Was it my grandfather? He must have seen who did it. Was it my grandfather? No. It was Jonah. That's the only way it could have happened. Why? They didn't tell me much about it. Jonah married my Aunt Lydia. Lydia? She was Mark's mother. Yes. Jonah was Mark's father. They tell me Lydia was a headstrong girl. Rebellious. My grandfather never had much time for anyone but his sons. Lydia, in order to get attention, threw herself at the caretaker. A stable hand named Jonah Snell. When my grandfather found out what happened, he made them get married to give the child a name. That he had died giving birth to Mark. My grandfather brought them into the house. He raised Mark. But beyond that, he wouldn't have anything to do with him. Jonah must have brooded and plotted for years. He knew he couldn't have the family name and fortune for himself. But he thought he could get them for his son. He must have been insane. If he wasn't then, he was later. He also knew that when my grandfather died, the estate would pass to Lawrence and then to Samuel, my father. After that, to the next oldest relative. Mark is three years older than I am. The night my grandfather died, Jonah saw his chance. I don't know how he lured them up here or why he chose this attic. But he slaughtered them. And he put the axe in a dead man's hand. And so Mark inherited everything. The plantation, the money, the estate. That's when I stopped using the name of Tierney. I swore that I'd never use that name again until people could stop whispering it behind closed doors. Listen. Mark? What'd you do with the gun? I don't know. I, I lost it. Get over there. successful, Philip? Yes, I'm sure that it did. Now the question is, what are we going to do about it? The truth has to come out, Mark. Grandfather's name has been stained for 17 years. You're going to clean it up. They're both dead. What difference does it make? None to you. You're a Snell. Yes, you never let us forget it, did you? We were poor white trash, and we dared link our name with the tyrannies, the pure aristocratic tyrannies. If you look under the surface, you'll find that they're as common as the rest of us. Have you forgotten Lydia? She liked to play on the stables with a hired help. She was your mother, Mark. Now look, I'm willing to believe you were too young to know what Jonah was going to do. If you renounce all claims to the estate and go away, we'll call it even. <laughs> Very generous of you. Always the fine tyranny gesture. I hate your nobility. It isn't that, Mark. It's just that I'm tired of hatred and revenge. I want only what's mine. But if you refuse, I'll fight you in every court in the land and I'll win. Yes, I knew what he was going to do when he went there that night, but I didn't try to stop it. I wanted it just like he did. Well, he got it for me and I'm going to keep it. If you want to fight, well, let's have it now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
are we going? Anywhere. It's going to take a little time to clean things up here. We can go to Lausanne if you wanted to. Mm -mm. They sent me there, didn't they? Yes. Even that madman Jonah couldn't bring himself to murder a child. He knew that your mind had blocked out what it had seen. So he set up a trust fund for you, set you away. Forgot about you. Philip, why did Mark throw Joan over the railing? Well, the old man must have brooded a long time over what he'd done. He wanted to stop any more killings, I'm sure. He even warned you about the chandelier. Mark was afraid he was going to confess, so he killed him. Come on. We left the old house, silent and foreboding, a place of horror and death. It was truly haunted. No one would ever live there again. It was a house of madness. And that brings the coffin lid down on Terra in the Haunted House. It was like a Scooby-Doo episode. <laughs> I mean, you know, I wanted a real Haunted House film. And it seems yeah. like the are ambi- What do you think? Was it haunted or not? Huh. It was not. Although I, I would like to so. sign that, that uh, actor that was swinging the axe. He, might, he looked like he had a good baseball swing. Right. No, he could, he could be on the team. But, you <laughs> know, he's, that bloke's probably... Dead by yeah, now. I think so. Could. Speaking of dead, where's Angela? Livingston, where's Angela? I have Now she's typically out here on the last segment because she wants cool. to say goodbye to the guests. Oh, there she is. <laughs> oh, we are celebrating Easter one night early. Very nice. Thank you. It's, oh, it's quite nice. No, typically I don't look good in in Playboy bunny ears, <laughs> but you know if I do the bunny dip, I can do it. Right. How'd you like the film? No. See, she, if it was a really haunted film, then she would have loved it, but uh, not in this case. All right. Well, what are you up to next, Mr. Russ Stanley? Well, the seasons were just starting, and right. uh, hopefully we're, we'll end in a parade. A parade? That's, that's what we like always a, strive for. A victory parade. Seems good. It, you know, we're hitting a lot of home runs. Now, do you do rings? Like We do. We do. If, if you win the, the, if not you the win Super the World Bowl, Series, the World yeah. Series, right? Yeah. You get a ring. Do you get a ring? Uh, yeah, they're beautiful. You yeah. get a ring as well. I've, I've got, I've got three World Series. You should. Well, actually, won. in two thousand two, we lost. You should. And we won. got ring. We Did got they take uh, them back National when League you lose? Champ rings. Did well, you're still the National League champion, and then whoever wins is a World Series champion. I see. Yeah. It's all so complicated. Uh, that's that's when you're, the complication goes away, and you get really excited. Right. Right. Well, no. If you've got a winning ring. Yes. Yeah, that's wonderful. She's got rings, but she didn't win anything. She, she, she took them off bodies. <laughs> no, it's, it's gruesome. So uh, keep him busy with that. A fun season yeah. ahead. All kinds yeah, of events above and yeah. beyond baseball, of course, because you guys do all kinds of things out there, right? Yeah, we do concerts and uh, baseball and do a lot of events, a lot of you special know, events. I've, I've never played a concert there. Well, you know, my well, career was waning before you actually built the, the place. So I, I imagine... <laughs> She's so unkind to me. <laughs> no. Well, she used to like my music until she actually started living with me, and then she decided she didn't like my music anymore. She likes Judas Priest. Who doesn't? Well, Come on, Rob Halford? No, but it's like, you know, she likes Judas Priest so much that she wants a Harley Davidson. She's got the cap. She's got the leather cap. So, all right. Enough about Tangella. If uh, we want to learn more about the Giants, where do we go? Oh, great. Uh, yeah, we have a lot going on. Uh, our website is sfgiants.com. sfgiants.com. Mario, that was for you. You, you, could get, you could get tickets and merchandise and information Absolutely. about the team. And right. all of our yeah. special events Good. and promotions and everything going yeah. on. So, uh, doing baseball stuff, lots of fun stuff, and of course supporting your dad's efforts to write more books. He has not yeah. stopped writing books. Yeah, I cannot yeah. believe that man. He's, he's like a, continuously spewing forth words onto page. He's got 180 pages ready to go. That is so wonderful. It's going to happen right. soon. All right. All right, Russ, thank you so much thank for you. coming on the show. We truly appreciate you watching this Scooby-Doo episode with us. 
And uh, next time you're in town, come see us, all right? Absolutely. All right, as far Thank as you me. guys go, we hope you will have a happy Easter tomorrow. Lots of eggs and candy, right? She likes eggs and candy. And uh, make sure that you save some eggs for your dogs. You know, dogs like eggs, right? No. So make sure you save some of the eggs for your dogs. Remove the shell first. It's important. And we'll see you next week. Different guests, different movie. Don't know who, don't know what, but it will be fun. See you next time. So, uh, Russ, you know, this thing about getting us some tickets to see the Giants play. I'm so excited. I'm thinking, will we be close enough to actually get autographs from the players? No, but you'll definitely see the tops of the players' heads.